Hello and welcome to the Smith Larry Chamber of Commerce continuation of our video uh, class offerings that we have here all the way from January through August of 2021. We're excited to be offering these free video classes that will be available on our website, smithvilletx.org uh, in our archive section. They'll also be available at the Smithville Public Libraries website. I'd like to introduce uh, Judy Bergeron, the librarian for, uh, or the library director for the Smithville Public Library, who's gonna say a few words about this video series. Thank you very much, April. And I just wanna give a shout out to the Smithville Area Chamber of Commerce and April's staff and crew doing a wonderful job, great lineup of training classes in partnership with us to help small businesses. And this um, grant comes to us from a CARES grant from the Institute for Museum and Library Services and the Texas State Library and Archives Commission. And we're very excited to be able to help support small businesses and uh, individual people who running their businesses and seeing if they can, if we can find ways to help them through this pandemic and to keep Smithville growing. And today we do have an expert at keeping things growing, keeping your business growing. And so I'm just gonna say, take it away, Abigail Jones. I'm looking forward to what you're gonna be sharing with us today. Thank you, Judy, happy to be here and thanks for having me. Um, I am just going to pop over to my presentation here and get started. Alrighty, everybody see this okay? Okay, so um, I kind of spoke to several of my friends in the area and local business owners and I had several people that were interested in turning their event space or their business into um, an event venue. So they spoke to me about it and, um, you know, several people in town have either just an open space or an existing business. And they, especially with COVID right now, we're trying to find additional ways for revenue generation. So I think that, you know, if you have a business in town or um, a usable space, it's always a great idea to brainstorm different um, events that you could use in that space in order to um, make a little more profit, especially right now with everything going on. So quickly, I just wanted to go over a little bit about me. So um, I went to the University of Texas and studied advertising um, and graduated in 2006. And I started an event management company in 2011. But I do corporate events for um, primarily oil and gas, tech, um, pharma. I do a lot of pharma, healthcare. So here's just a few companies that I've worked with in the past. So Schwab, Baylor Scott & White, Polycom, Allergan, which is a pharmaceutical company who is now AbbVie, Dolby Digital, and Microsoft. So I do everything um, from you know, sourcing the venues, so traveling all over the country and globally to find venue spaces and then I do specifically something that's called incentive trips. So for example, if the sales team at Allergan reach their goals, then they get to go on these specific um, trips and you know they wine and dine them and things like that. But it's also a content-driven conference where they learn about you know, the, new, the new medications or whatever it is that they're promoting in that space. So um, that's kind of what I do, of course, with, with COVID happening all the traveling stuff and a lot of it has turned to Zoom conferences, but um, hopefully within the next year or so, we'll be able to get back on the road. So this is what we're gonna talk about today. There are kind of six key focus points to go over. So first I just wanna talk about your space. So, you know, defining your space and the target market, um, discussing layouts of the space is very important come up with space grids to determine capacity and to figure out exactly what you have the ability to do within that space. Um, we're also gonna talk about amenities. This is kind of a funky word, but if you're an event planner, you use it a lot because when you're sourcing hotels, for example, for conferences, you know, each hotel has something that sets it apart from the other one. So whether that's, you know, complimentary transportation or spa services, um, specific types of rooms, so of course, in 
a smaller event space, we would be talking about just a restaurant that has a patio or something like that. So we'll discuss amenities in your space. Um, then we're gonna kind of brainstorm different events that you may be able to do within that space. Come up with some marketing tools to use um, as you're advertising your space. Um, you know, this really is the most important aspect of your new business or your existing business, because if you want to have an event there, you know, you're going to need to advertise it and bring the consumer to you. And then, um, well, this week we're going to touch on the launch party, what it is and how to do it. But next week we'll really dive into doing our first event. So your space. So when we talk about a venue space, I mean, this can really be anything. I mean, you know, um, if you have a space that can be used for events and is not, you're missing out on an opportunity for additional revenue generation. So really think of your location as an open canvas full of endless opportunities. And just a few examples of event venues are art galleries. I know we have quite a few of those in town. Wineries. Um, I used to live in Fredericksburg and, you know, they get so much tourism, they do really well, the wineries do, but many of them have opened up event venues on site as well to do weddings or festivals and things like that. And it's a great way to make additional money for your business. Warehouses, restaurants, hotels, coffee shops, undeveloped lots. I noticed that there's a handful of those around Main Street, which I'm sure that events have, be held, have been held at the, in the past. And, um, you know, if you own real estate vacant buildings, you may think about doing something there. But the first thing that you need to do is really define your space. So, you know, are you a new or established business? Um, there's benefits of both because if you bought a space, you want to turn it specifically into an event venue, that's great because you have a clean canvas to do that. But also your budget for that could be significantly larger than an established business where you're able to tag on to the business that you already have. You already have a community of people that already, you know, are um, going to your business. Um, you may already have tables and chairs, things that you would otherwise have to rent if you're doing an event. So there are um, pluses to both, but if you're an established business, the cost um, is much often less than if you're new and opening a, a venue. So is this your primary source of income or secondary? This kind of touches on the first point. Um, if you are opening an event venue, of course, it's going to be much more costly than it is if you're just tagging on to events to an existing one. So uh, for those who, who've asked me, you know, like, what do you recommend doing? What are some ideas you have? These are primarily businesses that are already functioning, but they just want to have some added um, income coming in. Um, one of the largest ones, which I'll go into this in a minute, is you really want to make sure as you are thinking about your space um, is if you're compliant with city, county, state, and TABC regulations. So I'll go into an example of this. Um, I used to have an event venue in Fredericksburg, and it was on Main Street. And because Fredericksburg is a huge tourism town, there are a lot of regulations there that may not necessarily um, in Smithville, but it's still very pertinent to go in and check with, um, you know, I'm sure April would be able to give contacts, but like the city manager and anyone else involved in zoning, because you want to make sure if your building is appropriately zoned, depending on what you're doing. And then TABC is the Texas Alcohol and Beverage Commission. So if you plan on serving any sort of alcohol at your event, whether you're an existing business or you're new, there are regulations with the state that you have to abide by with serving alcohol. And those are very important because if you, you can't just go and serve alcohol and charge it, you could get shut down. Um, also accessibility. So this is a big one for a lot of you who are on Main Street. You know, there's only a certain amount of parking. So if you plan on having an event where you have two to 300 people, you need to think about the flow of that and whether or not people are going to be able to park, where they're able to park. Also, handicap accessibility. This can mean several different things. Another big one, um, very timely right now, is there a need. So with COVID right now, you know, there's a lot of factors that are prohibiting 
events. You know, there's um, a limited amount of people that you're allowed to have in the space, especially when it comes to dining. You know, it's kind of a silly example, but as far as timing goes, you know, you probably wouldn't, if you had this beautiful space, you want to do yoga, you probably wouldn't want to do that in the middle of the winter outside. So um, you just want to really brainstorm what's going to be successful, you know, what's not, and then come up with a, a game plan for that. And then lastly, uh, we want to talk about defining your product, your brand, and your style. So I think it gets a little confusing sometimes. I've walked into these really beautiful spaces and you don't really know what their intention is because they try to do too many things. So I think focusing in on doing a couple really well is a better approach than like trying to do everything. So for example, if you're a restaurant and you want to integrate um, live music and be like the live music venue, that would, where, that would be where your focus um, is rather than trying to do several different things. I talked about this a little bit before on a previous class, but um, this is part of the brand identity. It is very important because it really serves as a clear definition of what your organization stands for. And brand identity ties into your product, which is your venue. And it's not just logo design and color schemes. You know, you really need to think about the compilation of all of these things like logo design for it, um, which of course is the shapes and fonts that act as your first impression color schemes. This is very important depending on what you're doing in the space, um, mood affecting hues that are associated with your brand, copywriting. So we're going to go into this in a little bit, but um, this is very important because this is the verbal style that constitutes the voice of your brand. So, you know, maybe you want to focus on being sort of casual or formal or funny. Um, and in your social media presence, you know, you just want that to be consistent. And then, of course, your mission statement and then products is uh, the goods and services you stand behind. So this is this would be your, the venue that you'd be providing. So the accumulation of all of these things is really your brand identity. So when you decide to come up with, you know, an individual space or somehow integrate that space into your existing business, it's really important to define what your brand identity is. Because, you know, of course, they, you know, it's very hard to do 10 different things really well, but it's easier to do one thing very well. So just kind of focus in on what your goal is, look at your space and, and you know, if the patio is what you're trying to use as your um, part of your brand identity, like we're all gonna go there to hang out in the patio and listen to music and really focus in on that and create um, an identity for that space. So there's no confusion. So I wanna give you guys an example. Um, of an event space, kind of a funky one, because I'm always asked like, well, I have this weird little space and I just don't know if it's gonna work well. And, um, you know, I don't know if people will come to it. So this is a picture, this is actually my brother right there, but uh, about five or six years ago, my brother and I stumbled upon this place in Fredericksburg. It was kind of funky and it was very curious as to what it was. There was this one little building um, out on Main Street, but then there was, this fenced in area. And whenever I drove by, I noticed it, these beautiful live oak trees in the back. And one day my brother and I were just hanging out and we were like, this would be a really great space um, that's needed within Fredericksburg where people could go out, there could be live music, dancing, you know, we could have very quick grab and go food where it's not, you know, not very complicated. Um, just strictly serve beer and wine, very casual vibe. So we ended up um, deciding to move forward with this property and it was a huge mess. So we go into the back and this is, uh, this is actually two months into us cleaning the back space. So you can't tell from this picture, but it was a huge mess. And um, we spent quite a bit of time cleaning it up. So this is the before. And for those of you that love junk, antiques, treasures, whatever you want to call it, this would um, be heaven too. So this is before, and then this is about six months later. So we cleaned everything out and we used as much of the space as we, uh, much of the um, findings that we could and created the space. So like the tin, for example, on the fence there, it's all tin we just found lying around. Um, I built those tables there and then we poured slab for a dance floor. Anyway, we turned it into this really great space and our goal really was to use this space as very casual for locals 
um, but eventually drive tourism there. And then also it was a great spot for rehearsal dinners and receptions for weddings. So for those of you that's ever been to Fredericksburg, you know there's a bunch of places to have a wedding, um, but limited on rehearsal dinners because of capacities at night and how busy it is. So that was kind of our brand is that we were known as the, the place you could go, you could have a great rehearsal dinner. So we added that onto our business plan and it was great um, profit wise. So this here, this is the outside. And then this is the inside beforehand, just a lot of stuff. And then we turned it into additional seating area here. It's much larger, but this is a smaller picture. So it kind of gives you an idea of like, you know, looking at your space, it may not seem that it has a lot of potential, but really look beyond that and get creative with the space because there's a lot that you can do, especially with outdoor areas. So coming up with your layout. So I'm gonna talk here a little about the layout. So um, when I go and look at space for our conferences, um, you know, of course, they have all sorts of layouts for me to look at to determine whether or not their floor plans are able to fit my needs. So this is really important for your space as well. This looks a little complicated, but it's not. I mean, you could typically get these from your blueprints um, if you own the building or if you had someone survey. They have a lot of programs online that are really easy that you can drag and drop stuff in. But it's important to know um, the area that you're defining as your layout because you'll need to know capacities for the space and several other things in order to hold events there successfully. So this is just an example. Um, I just pulled this online, but um, an example of a space. They have everything kind of clearly defined, the stage up at the front, where the bar is, where the tables are going to be. So it doesn't have to be super complicated, but um, on your layouts, you want to make sure that you have your distinct areas outlined. So, you know, if you have a dining room, a patio, um, a bar, you want all of those um, outlined. A specific meeting space, if there's an extra room added on, you want, want that on there as well. You want to triple measure your spaces. So I've had a lot of events where the spaces, we held them at maybe more casual places and the spaces weren't measured correctly. So for someone who's flying in from a different state, of course, I'm not there to measure and um, I do rentals based on those measurements. So it's really important that you measure that way, you know, if someone's bringing in tables and chairs and linens and things like that, um, bars are gonna take up a certain space that those measurements are correct. Because if they're not, it can be a huge issue and it has for me in the past. So you want to measure those and you can outline those on your grids as well. Um, you want to talk about traffic flow too. So, you know, if you're going to have a very large event and you, you need to designate, okay, how are people getting to restaurant restrooms? If you're having a buffet table, logistically, how are they going to get over to the buffet table? How are they going to get served beer? So you just want to define, um, next week we'll go into this more, but you'll come up with an agenda and a show flow for the night is what we call it. And you wanna make sure that the way that you have the room set up is gonna work with your staff and with um, your attendees. So just a few other little things. Um, you wanna have exit and restroom indications where those are on the map, because people wanna know that when they're booking it. Um, if you're gonna be doing buffet or sit down catering, you wanna indicate where all that would be set up within the grid, the capacity of each space. So this gets, a little bit tricky, but you can typically work with the fire marshal on this and they'll be able to tell you based on measurements how many people are able to be in the area. Um, and that's actually a regulation. So I don't know how it works in Smithville, but you know where I was, we had to have the fire marshal come in and they'll tell us what the capacity code is within that area. Um, of course, service areas I've already sort of touched on. Uh, you know, that's where your bars are where your buffet is being served. And then if you have particular areas for speaking or meeting areas like breakout rooms or a presenter will be talking, you wanna indicate those as well. So these are all just very high level. Of course, if anyone has any questions after this, um, we can go over this further. I'm happy to, to get on a call, but um, you just wanna have a, a basic design of your area. So amenities, so amenities, I talk about this in the beginning, it's kind of a funny word, but 
we use this a lot um, when we're sourcing different hotels. Uh, you know, typically if we're going to do a incentive meeting, I'll go to like three or four different hotels across the country and each of them or each one of them are trying to sell their brand to me. Um, and a lot of times what they'll do is they'll go over the list of amenities that sort of set them apart from their business or their hotel to the next one line. So for you, it's important because you want to provide added value when comparing your space to other spaces in the area. So look at your space, you know, and determine how to set yourself apart. So this can be any number of things. I mean, if you're an art gallery, you already have these beautiful paintings on the wall, you already have this ambiance, you know, maybe if you're a restaurant, you already have tables and chairs, so people aren't having to rent those. If you have a patio, you have the ability to do inside and out. So really look at your space and, you know, determine what it is that sets you apart from others. And these are really just a few, you know, a few, I mean, of course, there's hundreds of, of amenities that people can offer, but um, venue staff is one. So maybe you provide staff for the events where, you know, I know a lot of places that do weddings, they provide the space, but they don't provide the staff. So you're paying for, you know, you pay $10,000, which is pretty much across the board now in Fredericksburg, what it costs to get to rent a venue for a day. So you pay $10,000 for this, the space, and that includes maybe tables and chairs, and that's it. But perhaps you, um, you are able to offer venue staff, which, which is an added bonus. Um, technology, audio, visual, and Wi-Fi. This is all sort of one and the same. Um, some people offer AV for free, and, you know, and then some it's for a lesser charge. At hotels, of course, you're paying for all of this. It's just a matter of cost. But um, maybe at your coffee shop, for example, you offer Wi-Fi so that people aren't having to pay to get that brought in. Uh, tables, chairs, linens, any sort of decor or rentals that you would otherwise have to get for a third party. You uh, maybe include those, which is a great added bonus because as we all know, rentals get extremely costly and your budget kind of goes out the roof. Um, signage, you know, several people offer signage that's either, um, you know, tied into the, the AV or, you know, they have A-frames, whatever that looks like. Uh, catering. Uh, many venues allow you to bring your own catering, but some um, as an added revenue generation, they will um, provide catering on site. And then also a patio, which is another one I thought of. Um, there are quite a few of those here. So events, this is a big one. So this is more, I just wanted to go over sort of brainstorming events. Um, so the, this is really going to be dependent upon the space that you have and the best use for it. Okay, you're probably not going to hold, you know, some of the conference I used to do Oracle in San Francisco, which is 100,000 people. So logistically, in a town the size of Smithville, you wouldn't be able to do an event because of accommodations and catering and things like that. Be, you could pull it off. It would be very difficult and they wouldn't all be staying there. So um, but you know, in San Francisco, somewhere like San Francisco or Orlando, it makes sense. So you really want to look at your space and determine the best use for it and review things we've already discussed, like accessibility, capacity, city regulations, signage capabilities, and really the flow on how it's going to work. So I just want to touch on a couple of these because, um, you know, some of these are relevant for Smithville and some not so much because of the sizes, but um, like conference, trade shows and workshops, you know, I think you could probably do um, maybe some smaller workshops rotating with different businesses here and work together, but it'd be a little bit difficult to do things like conferences at, you know, as far as in April, maybe I'll speak on this more, but I'm not aware of a conference center in the area. Um, and then fundraisers would be a great opportunity in some of these spaces. A big one is networking events. So we did all sorts of networking events um, in Fredericksburg, whether it was like young professionals or UT, you know, I'm a UT alumni. So um, we would have like our events at specific restaurants. And it's great for the restaurant because it went from like, we'd usually typically do it on like a Monday night where nobody's going to the restaurant. 
um, and it's a slow night for them. And then we, we would bring in a hundred, you know, 50 to a hundred people and they're purchasing their alcohol and food and everything. So even though it may not be something that's, you know, taking a lot of time to organize is great because for Monday night, we're really not going to make much profit. You end up doing really well. Um, some of the ideas I've spoken to people in town about are like theme dinners and wine pairings, which are really great. There's some really beautiful spaces in town where you could do pairings with some of these local wineries and have chefs um, come in and do a theme dinner and then charge per person for that, maybe get some live music. Um, a few people have approached me about, they're thinking about doing yoga classes, which I think is great. And I'll totally go to one of those. Um, but yeah, I mean, you could have an instructor come out to your place and maybe you just have a really great lawn and you want to do that. Um, that's an option. And of course, in this town, there's so much art. You know, art expos are great. And maybe you want to showcase a specific artist. And, you know, you can always compound additional ideas onto it. So if you wanted to showcase a certain artist, you could have a musician come in and play. You could you know, charge at the door for a dinner. So you could, it could be very dynamic. We're doing multiple things at once and it's not just putting someone's art on display, but you're really making it more of an experience. And that's really what it's about. And then rehearsal dinners and receptions. So um, I'm not as, as familiar uh, with the space out here, but I know there are some wedding venues around here. And, you know, maybe you want to market yourself as the location for rehearsal dinners or whatever that is. So, so, Part of doing that is reaching out to these wedding venues and and putting your you know giving them your contact information letting them know who you are and um making that connection so those are just a few ideas of course there's hundreds more so i discussed this in the beginning about marketing your venue so regardless if you run a large conference center or a small venue that hosts special events, getting the word out about your venue really should be your main business priority. Um, you want to apply impactful marketing strategies because they will help draw in the small local businesses, but also attract larger planners like myself who handle um, big events. Um, you know, and you, we're in a good position here close enough to Austin where they're, I mean, I know right now it's a little discouraging because of COVID, but um, Austin is one of the biggest um, one of the biggest locations for conferences. Like any of the groups that I work with, they always want to come to Texas, and Austin is one of the big markets for it. And we do a lot of like day outings where we go to different places. You know, and Smithville could be one of those places, and it could bring in some major business. So um, making those connections and marketing your venue is really important because you are situated in this place where, you know, you're located close enough to a large town where you have the ability to do that. So, um, these are all very high level, of course, um, but these are just a few tips for marketing your event space. So, of course, first of all, what you want to do is you want to design a website because you need online presence. Um, I taught a class, I don't know, maybe it was a few months ago through Squarespace, which is a platform that is template based. So um, it's very easy to create a website on there. Uh, you know, they have all sorts of support communities on there that can help you, but um, it's very easy and very cheap to do it. So I suggest if you're not real savvy on the computer. I suggest using something like Squarespace or even like GoDaddy, I think has their own platform. Um, it costs you about like 17 bucks a month, I think to host it. And there's really beautiful designs. They already have stock art that you can use so you don't have to take a bunch of your own pictures. Um, of course you want some of your venue, but they have quite a few to um, assist with like bulking up the website. But I encourage you to do that because it's, uh, you need to have some sort of online presence because it, you know, it's frustrating when you're trying to get in touch with the business, you know that it's there, they don't have any pictures and things like that. So building a website is really important as well as building an online community. Um, by building an online community, you know, that's, a, that's really like developing your social media profiles, whether it's like Instagram, which is really great or Facebook for, promoting your event venue. Um, you know, I think that can get really overwhelming, but there is a tool 
called, there's several of them, but one of them that I like to use is Hootsuite, which is a platform where you can put in all your social media profiles, make one post and it goes out to all your social media profiles. So you, you put in your profiles essentially, and then you make design one little post and it goes out to everything. So it saves you a lot of time. So Hootsuite's one, I know that they've done a class on Canva, which is a great tool where you know, it already has a bunch of templates for you to use and you can just switch things out. So, so those are both really great tools, Hootsuite and Canva when you're doing your online profiles. Um, Co-marketing with other businesses, I kind of touched on this, but look, things just work more smoothly when everybody works together. And I think in this town, there's a lot of opportunity for businesses to work with one another. I mean, especially when it comes to events, because there's some really great spots here. So, you know, maybe if you are a blank slate, just kind of a um, vacant building that you own and you want to do some themed dinners. Well, I encourage you to like work with, you know, a chef in town if you can or a caterer in town. Um, because making those connections are wonderful and it really helps everybody involved when you're creating that community. Um, of course, get connected with your local chamber of commerce because they'll be able to include you on like e-blasts that go out. I know that they're doing some publications and listings on their website and they're coming up with a new visit, uh, visit Smithville um, tourism website, you know, and you can get listed on there as well. You can get listed on different directories. There's a ton of those. If you're a wedding venue, um, you know, there's uh, relevant directories that you can get on. Um, and then, of course, just like establishing yourself in the industry. And one of the ways to do that is to create like a launch party or a networking event to, you know, you could also call this a grand opening, whatever you'd like to call it, to really put yourself out there, um, let people know who you are and um, sort of set the stage for uh, future successful events. So today we're gonna to go into a little bit of the launch party and then next week we are going to talk specifically on how to create an event from start to finish. And I'll be able to provide some of those tools for you in order to do that. So a launch party is kind of, I mean, like I said, you could interchangeably, excuse me, changeably use this with, um, you know, networking event, launch party, um, grand opening, soft opening, you know, but it's really just an opportunity to put your, let your event venue shine and to make people aware um, that you've opened or what you're, what you're doing there. So the, these are just a few of the goals. And as I said, next week we'll go over them more. But once you have done all of the tasks that we we've already previously spoken about, you know, just making sure that you're compliant with the city, determining what your capacity is, doing the layout, you know, really owning and understanding your, um, your space, then I would recommend having a networking launch party for people in the industry to come and view, uh, view your space. So the first goal is to define your budget. So if any of you have ever worked with a budget, it's very, I'm sure we all have, it's very easy to go over. Um, I got married recently and we eloped and, you know, it was supposed to be cheap and it wasn't. So um, the point is, is like you always, you know, you add, $10 here and $100 here and $1,000 here, and then it very quickly goes out of control. So the first thing is really to define your budget. So if you're going to have um, this launch party, what are you going to be providing? Is it food, alcohol, entertainment? You know, you, um, next week I'll be providing some templates to outline budgets so you can really go over every line item, but you want to outline every detail for the launch party or else your budget will go spiraling very soon. Um, and then number two, this is a very important part of the launch party is to build a network. So I know that the chamber does a lot of ribbon cuttings, which are great. Um, and this kind of coincides with that is that you want to think of this as a business development opportunity. So if you have this great space and you've defined what you're going to do, then you want to invent, or excuse me, you want to invite like industry vendors. So for example, if you are 
a space like we had and and our goal was to have rehearsal dinners there so i invited when we first opened we had a grand opening i invited the newspaper because everyone there still reads the newspaper i invited the newspaper i invited everyone in the industry that was in a vendor that i was aware of like every caterer in town um every wedding planner you know av photographer so really like just pull out a sheet of paper and define who are all these people involved in the events that you would like to produce so i invited all those i invited the chamber and they um were great and did a whole write-up about us uh before and after to promote it different influencers so if there's people in the space that you think would help your business um, maybe it's even like different business owners in the area um, invite them and media I mentioned that with the newspaper and then of course locals um, because as a tourist when I go to a place and I always ask locals for recommendations as to like where I should eat where should I get coffee things like that and so um, locals are a great source of knowledge um, for our current and future business. And then goal number three is really map out the details. Um, this is this definitely coincides with goal number one is you wanna concentrate on the details and that'll really determine the success of the event. When they say the devil in the details, it's so true. You wanna stay organized, create an agenda, clearly define roles and responsibilities the day of. So, you know, first impression really is everything. I know everyone always says that, but it's true. And this is your opportunity to, you know, really shine for people and you only have one first impression. So it's very important that you map out all the details, even down to the tiniest ones on that day. So um, it can be a huge success for you. And then um, finally, follow up. So of course a good party is great. Um, we all love a good party, but if you don't follow up, you're really gonna lose momentum and lead. So, the goal of the uh, launch party is really to generate buzz, you know, get that network of people go, um, built. So then you'll be able to drive more business to your event venue, uh, you know, but after the party, just make sure that you find a way to generate leads, whether it's like doing a giveaway where people put in their contact information or a sign up as they're coming in, um, however you want to do it, but you want to find a way to uh, circle back around to those and thank them for coming. You know, it's it's a small gesture, but you know, when someone thanks you for coming, taking the time out of their day to invest in your business, um, you know, it's appreciated. So make sure and follow up. So that's pretty much all. I know that was a lot of information. I was trying to do high level, but um, next week we will be talking about um, planning your first event for your event space. So we will. Uh, We'll go over developing your goals, establishing an event budget, of course, and I'll be providing some templates for those, creating a master timeline. You'd be surprised once you do a timeline and you plug in everything, how detailed it is and how it is important to get, excuse me, to get that all on paper. Um, also determining the space grid. So, you know, if you're doing catering for the event, we want to determine that space grid, figure out where everything's going and how the flow is going to go how they're going to go through the lines, you know, down to those little details, because people remember that. I mean, I don't know if you've ever been to a restaurant and it's like you order at one place and like people seem very confu confused. It's just, it's good to have that impression of like seamless flow. So, and then of course, branding the event. Um, I'll talk to you about the best way to find partners and vendors for the event, building out your marketing campaign. Um, we talked about this about on your website your social media out, outlets, and then of course, a uh, day of logistics. So defining roles and responsibilities on those days. So that will be next week, uh, Wednesday from 12 to one. I think that's all I have. Unless anybody has any questions. I know that was a lot of information. <laughs> Thank you, Abby. So I don't have any questions that have come in from our participants. But if you do have some questions, please type them into the chat. In the meantime, I have a few things that I can add to some of the things that you said in your training. Number one, we have several event venues here in our area. Um, in, in fact, right here in Smithville, we have a fantastic wedding venue right outside of town called Red Ridge, uh, which is a beautiful uh, wedding event venue. 
and Ponderosa events has a gorgeous wedding venue and event venue just right down uh, the highway in between Smithville and Page. So just to answer those two questions. And then of course, there's always, there's, we have a wonderful um, rec center, which is the Smithville Recreation and Event Center. They have um, okay. a very large centralized space for, for more what you think of as classic conferences. So for example, if you wanted to bring a small, if you wanted to bring a small conference to Smithville, you would have a large space where you could meet and have a, have a keynote speaker. And then they have multiple breakout rooms. So you could do, for example, a half day conference where you have your keynote speaker at the beginning, and then you have some breakout conference, smaller conferences throughout the day. That space is absolutely available and it's beautiful. All of that is we can help you set that all up as a member of the chamber, we can help uh, negotiate pricing and we can work closely. Since we are the CVB, the Convention and Visitor Bureau here in Smithville, part of what we do is attract folks. Generally, the place that we attract folks that wanna use Smithville locations is to our parks. We have 11 very nice municipal parks. The nicest of which our crown jewel is the River Bend Park where Jamboree is typically held. It is a perfect location for large outdoor events. Uh, we've held and managed several large outdoor events there for 10,000 people. So we're not uh, enormous, you know, we're not going to be hosting 100,000 person events, but we can easily accommodate 10,000. We set up um, shuttles with our local carts program um, to shuttle people back and forth from lodging properties in Bastrop or LaGrange. We have lots of local bed and breakfasts and other lodging properties throughout uh, the, uh, we're outside of our city limits here, but in the, up in the woods, essentially. So there's lots of opportunities. If you kind of want to think about some interesting event opportunities, uh, we host car shows. Uh, a couple of years ago, we hosted a geocaching group that came out with several hundred people that did geocaching in our two state parks, which are, is a perfect location for that. So we have a lot of, uh, Abby is correct, we are perfectly situated to, uh, to host lots of really great, fun, especially outdoorsy type events, but we do have a wonderful event center here. We also, of course, have our beautiful Main Street. So if people would like to, you know, consider hosting a music festival or something fun like that and would partner with the chamber, uh, we can help um, schedule all kinds of really neat outdoor events in our beautiful, historic, very compact and easy to use um, downtown Main Street area. So that, I think those kind of answer some of your questions. The other question you had, Abby, is um, about <coughs> permitting. So permitting in Smithville is really not a hurdle. It's very easy to get permitted to do anything you'd like to do. There's very little permitting requirements from the city's point of view. They do have a sound permit requirement um, if you're going to do an outdoor event, but that is very inexpensive, uh, very easy to secure just by going to the city, filling out a form, paying your $10 and getting your sound permit. And um, so we have a lot of uh, venues in our downtown area that like to do outdoor music, for example, and they just go get their, secure their sound permit. And as long as they're inside the central business district, they don't have any problem there. Even if they're not in the central business district, they just need to get their permit and they're fine. And so we don't have a lot of red tape when it comes to um, having events. We have had a question come up. April, does the chamber help find vacant spaces that are available to do events and pop-ups? Yes, absolutely. And we've done that on several occasions, including EH Mercantile likes to come and do a pop-up event during the Christmas season in our downtown area. We're very ha happy to help set those up. A lot of people like to do pop-ups in the vacant lots downtown. Abby mentioned that, uh, doing some vacant lot um, events downtown. For, for those of us that have lived here a long time. There used to be Jamboree would do their big, huge event downtown. They outgrew our downtown area, which is why we now have the big River Bend Park area. And not to get too specific, but um, 
Smithville is really kind of a wide open blank campus canvas to do big events. So the chamber does 70 plus events a year and we do them all over the place. And this year due to COVID, we intend to have our big annual awards banquet outside downtown as a big kind of table on main concept. So it'll be outside and socially distance and everyone will wear masks, but it's gonna be gorgeous right here on our big, beautiful main street with beautiful twinkly lights and live music and thinking outside the box, so to speak, that kind of overused term for our little rural community makes perfect sense. And especially if you wanna do runs, we host a lot of runs, like run through the pines and uh, 5Ks and all of those things we are perfectly situated. We do lots of cancer runs and other health related runs um, every year. Um, so if you have an event venue or are interested in doing a pop-up or something along those lines, yes, the chamber is very well aware of the landlords that are interested in leasing out their space for those events. And we can help you, or I'm sure that Abby would be very happy to help you uh, put together an event. I think I, wrote down the things that you were, that you said April could answer better. And I feel like I <laughs> did answer that. Um, yeah, that's great. I didn't actually know about the uh, event venue here. So good to know. <laughs> yeah, it's an excellent event center. space at the rec center. I certainly encourage anyone that's interested in doing an event in our area to contact us here at the chamber so that we can give you a tour of locations. Uh, we just booked a great event with the Texas Photography Association they're going to come do a small conference here where they would have some breakout workshops essentially with a keynote and a small area for vendors to have a little vendor space um, so that in between workshops you can go and event uh, you know visit the different uh, trade show booths have a little trade show area that's perfect for us and we are significantly less expensive than the large um, very nice big convention center and conference center in Bastrop. We're much um, better priced here. We're very competitively priced. So it makes sense for people to either be happy to shuttle back and forth or just get in their car and drive 12 miles between here and Bastrop because all they need is a hotel room. And of course, the more conferences we get here, the more opportunity we have to um, hopefully attract a, a large lodging property. That'd be nice. And that's that's a goal for us. So if we don't have any other questions, I think we've uh, we've kind of gone through the stage one of your questions, uh, I mean, of your presentation. I know, Abby, you said that you're going to be offering kind of the stage two of this next week, correct? Correct, yeah. And yeah, so I'm I encourage you through the details of doing your event. So. So the actual nuts and bolts of doing your events. Uh, one of the other questions that came up was about TABC. So uh, yes, if you're going to have a special event here in, here in Bastrop County, um, I'm happy to give people contact numbers, but essentially you just get a special event permit. Um, if you're going to have a permanent expansion and have an event space, then you need to get your beer and wine license and alcohol if you want to have liquor. But if you're going to just have a single event, like a pop-up, it costs $231 to get a special permit. And that gives you three days to um, sell alcohol. Um, it's different if you're just doing a tasting or something where you're not charging, that's a totally different scenario. Uh, but that's how it's handled in Bastrop County. We no longer have a TABC rep here in Bastrop County. You have to actually contact the Austin office or physically go to San Marcos. Uh, but everything you can do online now, so it's very easy to to do all of that. If you're a nonprofit, the pricing is different than if you're a for-profit. And I always, always strongly recommend that if you're doing a fundraiser or something, um, almost every nonprofit is a member of the chamber. So contact your local chamber here. And if you'll partner with us, it makes it easier because we can kind of help cut through some of the red tape of doing your events. Okay. Okay. Great, so I you. think that brings us to the end of this particular uh, presentation. Abby Jones, I appreciate you today being here. Always such an excellent um, instructor. 
I uh, encourage everyone to go online to smithfieldtx.org, which is the chamber's website page, and read all the many, many classes that we have available through this series. We'll be offering 40 classes over the next several months through, through the end of August that touch on all sorts of different topics from event uh, events and event venues to uh, all sorts of marketing, financial, all sorts of financial planning. So there's lots and lots of great opportunities, none, all free of charge, all here to help our businesses. And I also, of course, want to thank the Smithville Public Library, the City of Smithville, TSLAC, the Texas State Library Archiving. Uh, I don't know what the C stands for. That's terrible. I should know that. So we'll just say TSLAC, um, mm -hmm. as well as the uh, the Library Services Association for helping us with the this grant. And again, thank you all for thank you for being here today. And come see us again soon. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, everyone. Bye.